Hope everybody's having a good day today. Let's say you want to convert your your terrain paints to the PBR 1.5, and this is what you see over here, your upgrade terrain materials. So when you do this, it'll give you this little warning, and then you upgrade and hit close, and then you'll get this here. Now, in this tab here, this base texture size, um, I don't know anybody that's going to make a texture that's 64 by 64. So let's make this a 2048 by 2048, and the macro texture size, let's make these both 1024 by 1024 and apply changes. What this will do now is it'll require all the materials that you make all have to follow this global resolution thing. So looking over here, you see you got five types of um, categories that go for each terrain paint the base color normals roughness ambient occlusion and height map now all five of these all have a base texture and they all will have to be they all need to be 2048 by 2048 since that is what is put here here now each one also has a macro texture and a detail texture See, each one has a macro and a detail all the way down the list. And those macros and details should both, they should be 1024 by 1024, if that is what's declared here. So at bare minimum, to see anything, uh, well, you need a new material. Uh, let's just make a new one. New material 5, we'll call it. We'll add that material to here. Now, we can edit this material by putting a base texture, which is the bare minimum needed. Now I've already made some textures so that this will make this video easy to follow. We go here to here. Alright, now save you some time. You'll want to copy this to your clipboard so you don't have to keep navigating to it. So the first image, base image, 2048 by 2048. Now I'm going to make this thing, since this map, this terrain block is 2048 by 2048, I'm going to make this 2048 scale. Now we ain't going to see nothing until we add the ambient occlusion base texture. They have to be paired together. Uh, I am just going to use the exact same map. Save changes. Now over here add that new material and once you do that you can delete the warning material if you delete that warning material without having anything in here you're probably going to lock up the system lock up the game all right we don't need this anymore so i'm going to minimize that but i did go over that with you so um, now here's our base texture this is it it looks like we're upside down. We're on the, looks like we're underneath the damn thing somehow. You know how I know this? Because this is flipped backwards. <laughs> this is my name up here on the terrain block. All right, but anyway, so that's our base texture. Now, just how we did this, we can do the same thing for the macro. If all we want to see is the macro texture, we'll get rid of these. And see, this is probably what you're typically seeing here, just black, nothing. So the macro texture, we'll add that. Now that, like I said, is a 1024 by 1024. And it has to also be paired in its ambient occlusion to see it. So we'll use the same map. And there's our macro. Now... One thing you can note here is how far this macro is drawing into the distance. If you scroll down to the bottom here, you'll see macro distances. This is the end fade. This is the total distance that it'll draw. See, we gotta get pretty close if we're gonna see that now. See, that's 500 meters. This would be 400 meters that it's drawing this macro, and so forth and so on. Now. If you tell the far distance to match the end distance, you're not going to get a blended end. It's going to be a hard edge. 
you know, this is just a tad bit more. It feathers it a little. But you can have this even closer if you want it to blend even farther. You know, it just depends on what you're wanting to make. You can put that down to zero. No, you can't. <laughs> At zero. Now, you also got this near distance and start fade and near fade. I'm not going to try to explain that. Um, and I don't want to try to explain this macro attenuation either. Just, I just for now stick to the basics. That way you know how this is blending. All right. Now, just like the base map here with the terrain scale, we also got a macro mapping scale, which we can adjust and make this scale um, however we like. Now that's the macro. Now let's show you the detail. The same thing as the macro, the detail, which I made a material for, called detail. It's also a 1024 by 1024. And it needs to also be paired with an ambient occlusion. And we'll just use the same material. Save changes. And there is the detail map. And just in the same way that macro has a f maximum distance, so does detail. You can adjust these depending on how much you want to have them draw. I wouldn't have the detail draw very far. Um, now, let's see them all together. So we'll put the base texture back. And as I said before, to see base texture, that has to have base ambient inclusion. Macro. macro and then lastly the detail map so you can see how these all work together now these colors aren't really great to illustrate this uh, they're not too dark they're not too light but they all complement each other and they can both neg they can negatively affect each other if one's too dark or one's too light uh, the amount of intensity each one has is in the macro strength and the detail strength the base map is always going to be the same but you can lessen the intensity of the macro and details let's just say we put zero and zero Now let's do the same thing with the detail, zero and zero. Now what we get is just the base texture again. Sometimes you can have what looks like it's oversaturated. And what I'll do is like put 0.1 strength. Now this number is what's up close and this is for what's far away. Let's get up close. I think it's 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 1 is the max. Actually, I think you can go higher than that, maybe. No, 1 is the max. And see how the distance is very light. It's transparent back there. That's because that's 0. Like, put that at 0 0.1. And you'll start to see in the distance it coming in up to the maximum distance that is here 
course. So one being the most. All right. Now, details the same way. You can have detail um, more prominent by putting more of a number, like 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 1, that's the most. And then in the distance, I'll just skip to 1. See. Now that's just the basics for the terrain paint. Um, I did make normal a normal map, and uh, the easiest way I can explain this is to just delete the macro and the detail, so that all we are seeing is the base texture. Because what you see about to apply to the base texture can be individually also applied to the macro and the detail. So let's save this so that we're back to our base image. Now what I did to make this a normals map is I just did a generic uh, filter that converts an image to a normals map. So as I said with the base textures, this also needs to be 2048 by 2048. So here we have the normals for that. Now you're not going to see this until the roughness map and height map are also included. I don't know that the, I don't think the height map has to be, but we'll do the roughness next. So the base, so as like how base color has to be paired with ambient occlusion, the normals need to be paired with roughness and possibly height also. So we're going to just use the base color map for the uh, roughness also. That's not ideal, but this is just to make this video. Now we don't see nothing yet, so like I was pretty sure. I wasn't pretty sure. I wasn't sure, to be honest. The height map. Now we're going to put the best uh, texture in there and see. We should see the normals appear here. Yep. See the normals? The 3D normals, or whatever, you know, it gives it that look of that 3D look. Now, you also will note the shininess of this. This is where the shininess comes in for the roughness. Now, this isn't great to illustrate roughness, so what I got prepared is a separate texture for roughness. But you can see now how you have to have these minimums in just to see the normals. Um, so let's change this to a different one. I'm going to copy this to my clipboard because this is a new location. I don't want to keep navigating to it. So you know how you can apply like canvas to a picture and for like your photo editor to make it look like there's canvas on the picture? That's what I did here. So this roughness, when we apply it, you see now this is canvas. It gives the illusion of like a different kind of surface. I also did this with another material so that you can see how this also, uh, another way to look at it. Uh, these little cells here are tiles. Now one thing that's uh, one thing you should note is the way roughness is is the colors that represent the darker areas like the cracks and crevices those should be black and the, and the uh, non crack and crevice areas should be uh, light so what I did is inverted this material to swap it that's how it's supposed to be if you're wanting like this to look like it's got cracks in it that are you know what I mean not not flip the other way flip the flip the correct way which is no right or wrong way you maybe your material you know calls for it to be um, the other way now Keep in mind, these are all just the base texture. 
that we see, the one that you see when you're far away. We haven't even talked about the the normals roughness height for the macro in detail, which there I didn't prepare images for these, but they do the same thing just on the scale of the macro, the detail, whichever one you got. Like we'll put a macro back in here, and you'll see that the base materials normals and ambient occlusion and height are also are. Did I miss one? I missed one. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I'm confusing myself. Macro. Hold on a second. All right. Yeah. Macro. You may be wondering why these are flipped. Well, for some crazy reason, I don't know why. Earlier, these were flipped. Mirrored the other way. So I flipped them in the photo editor so that this video would make sense, but it still ended up being flipped. So Oh, I gotta close. I got too many of these open. This gets this is where it gets too damn confusing with all these. So just focusing on the uh base and the ambient inclusion for the macro. So I'll get those back plugged in. And save changes. See, now you can see the macro, but you see the macro, but you also see the normals for the base texture. Now, you see how like these normals are kind of fading into this here. If you had macro normals, I may have, oh, I may have that in here. Let me check. I may, I may have, I may have made one. Actually, I did. So to see the macro normals, and we got to have a roughness macro, which I'm going to just use that one and for the height map I'm going to use the same image and then save changes and now we get normals for the macro texture and you see how the normals for the base material are also present like a combination of the two working together now the final thing will be the detail texture macro which I don't I know I didn't make that but it would be the same thing you would have normals applied to the detail texture 